In today's video we're going to look at um, a topic where we have dimensions driven by equations. Okay, So instead of us typing in a value into um, our smart dimensions, instead of us typing in a specific value, we're going to type in a formula that will help calculate um, the value for us. And this is very useful when we look at configurations, um, which is going to be explained in another video. So to try and um, put that into a bit of context, we have an example here. We have a piece of Lego, okay? And I suppose we all know Legos come in all shapes and sizes, but a lot of them can be very similar, except maybe just with this piece of Lego, it has, if we call these um, little extrusions on the top posts, we could have Lego pieces with, instead of four posts on top, we could have another two, so we could have six posts in length, or eight posts in length, or ten posts in length, or even just two or one post in length. So instead of us having to constantly keep typing in the dimensions to re, uh, I suppose redevelop this, we can use formulas um, in a smart way. So that's what this will automatically update as we go. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that just using this Lego example. What's an, I've now I've taken the liberty of doing up the Lego piece um, straight off. Okay, but I've taken um, What's very important to start with is that each of my sketches are fully defined, okay? So all these sketches that I've done um, in between, each of them are fully defined. You see, the sketch is fully black, it says fully defined down here. So that's important because all my dimensions are labeled so they're fully constrained. So as I update, everything updates automatically because everything's related, okay? so. What we're going to start doing is we're going to start actually putting names on dimensions that are important um, so that we can work out other dimensions from those names. Okay, and let me just put that into context here. If we look at this is our standard specification sheet for a particular Lego piece, okay, with four posts. And we say four posts, it's got four posts on the top. And the inside posts are the posts on the bottom. So it's got three. So we've got a name for kind of those two patterns there. We've four in the top, three in the bottom. And the rule for Lego is that there's always, well, my particular rule anyway, is that there's always going to be one less inside post than there is on the top. Okay, so that's one rule. Also, um, the other thing that we're going to work out is the overall length, because obviously as we add more posts on, the length is going to increase. How we work out this 31.8 is, it's the distance from the edge to the center of the circle. Okay, if we know we know the diameter of that circle is 4.8, so its radius 2.4. So 2.4 from 6.3 is 3.9. So there's a distance from here to here of 3.9. There's also a distance of here to here of 3.9. So we've got that 3.9 distance is going to be important to us. That's multiplied by 2. And then we add that on. If we know there's a space in between each um, diameter of 8. Okay, and then ultimately that 8 would be made up, just say if we're going from the centre here to the centre here, that's one space, and the centre here from the centre here, it's another space, and the centre here to the centre here, that's another space. And so there's three eighths plus our two edges being added on to make up that 31.8. So again, that's always one less than the number of posts multiplied by the distance between them. Okay, so there are important measurements to me that I'm going to use in this formula, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's go in here. The thing I can do is, um, we know if we click on each um, part, we can look at, very quickly see the dimensions, okay? We can also show all dimensions by right-clicking on annotations, make sure display annotations is shown, and go show feature dimensions. Now usually, <laughs> so you'll see them starting to catch up there now. See it's starting to populate, just sometimes with the graphics card, it may. Uh, take a wee while for you to update, but you'll see it starts showing me all them dimensions and they're they're put in on top of each other and it can be hard to access them. But that's a way to view all your dimensions all at once. Okay, now I'm just going to do it a little bit of a nice way. We're going to have to come back to that in a minute, um, but we're just going to turn them off for the moment. Okay, and I'm going to go in directly to each feature and highlight the ones that are important to me. Okay, so. The first thing we're going to start, we're going to start from the bottom down. You see this little tree here, okay? That refers to the linear pattern, to how many patterns of the uh, inside extrusions we're going to do. So instead of that being called tree, I'm going to change the name. See this primary value up here? I'm going to change the name of that to number of inside posts. 
So now you will see if I annotations and I go show my feature annotations, if it will populate for me. Just again, you see the graphics card is taking a while to populate. Okay, there's the three. Now, if I show dimension names, there we see it. You see now this dimension is now referenced by being called number of inside posts. Okay, and you'll see the other dimensions just have their standard um, D1, D2. Basically, that means dimension one in whatever sketch I started at. This is dimension one in a different sketch. Okay, so see D1 at sketch one. But now this one's called number of inside posts. So I can refer to that quite quickly with a name for my formula. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build up this formula. So that linear one, that's important because I know my number of inside posts is always going to be one less than my number of my outside posts. So let's actually label that next one, the outside post one. If I go to the linear pattern one, that four is going to be important to me. And I'm going to rename that number of posts, so top posts. And we always do capitals um, in CAD just to keep it really clear. So we've got number of posts there. So that's important to us. Um, another thing that is important to us is if we look at linear pattern two, okay, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show that off. So I'm just looking at these ones here. That dimension is important. Look at our boss extrusion one. Yes, this dimension here. That dimension from the edge on the bottom. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for the one on the top. Isn't that right? Yeah. So this dimension here, that 3.9 that I talked about. Okay, we're going to label that as the top, keep it in caps, top center distance, so top CD. Okay, because that one's going to be important to us. And also what's going to be important to us is on that linear pattern we have that spacing. So we'll just call it, click on it, and we'll call that uh, TP spacing for top post space. Okay, so that's important to us. Top post space. Um, and then I think that's really all I need to label at the moment. They're all the names that's going to be important for my formula. Okay, so that's how you rename dimensions because it'll make it easier, easier for us when we um, go to to refer to them in formulas. So I'm going to turn this annotation thing, and I'm having a bit of trouble turning back all um, the dimensions there, and I'm having a bit of trouble in the sense that they pop up and then they disappear, but hopefully we'll still get through everything we need to get through. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change what some of the dimensions actually are. All right, so see here on this number of inside posts, if I double click on this, I'm going to modify it. Okay, instead of us typing in directly three, I'm going to type in equals. So I'm going to type in a formula. And what this is going to equal is the number of bottom posts is going to equal my number of top posts. So see the way that's highlighted now? If I click that, you can see there it is, number of top posts. And then I'm just going to type in minus one. So it's always going to be whatever the number of top posts are, minus one. I press enter, and tick that, and you'll see I now have a red kind of sum sigma sign beside it. I'm not saying this is being calculated through a formula. And it's still three. It hasn't changed because we haven't changed the number of posts on the top. So that's great. The next one, uh, and you might get that just a little rebuild because we've modified it slightly and we can rebuild it. And it hasn't changed at all. Okay, there's all my formulas there just squeezed in on top of each other. Next thing we're going to do, and this the more complicated one, is we're going to edit this overall length. And that could have been actually a good one to name. Call that L A N G T H. Put that in caps. Okay. So the length, the total length is important because as we increase the number of posts, this length is going to change. And that's what we kind of spent a bit of time at the start discussing how we're going to calculate that. So if I double click this and press enter, and I'm just going to move this out of the way so I can get full access. Okay, so what that's going to equal is, it's going to equal our top center distance, so that distance from the edge, multiplied by 2, because that happens on two ends. And we're just going to put brackets around that formula to make sure everything's 
calculated correctly. So it's going to equal that, and then it's going to be plus. And again, we're going to have to do some parentheses and brackets. It's going to equal the number of posts minus one times, so I close my brackets there, times that distance between them, that top space distance. We press enter. So that should calculate it out for us. If we don't have any errors. Oh, I must have turned off my numlock. Um, times number of posts times that top space distance. Just not going in there at the moment. So what you need to do is, I suppose you need to make sure that this gets highlighted. So that that goes in. Okay, so see it's in there now. So it'll let me take that in. We're still at 31.8 because we haven't changed it at all, but we've just put it in by a formula. So it's calculating that 31.8 through a formula now instead of us actually typing in 31.8. And we can see that because it's got that little sign beside it. Okay, brilliant. So we can rebuild everything and you can save that as you are. So now I can turn off, um, well I can leave them on if you want because I'll just show you it all happening um, all at the one go if you want and then I'll clean it up. So the main thing that's actually driving this pattern now, or sorry, this um, this whole piece is the number, um, the number I put in for my linear pattern. So if I increase this number of top posts, the length will automatically increase and also the number of posts underneath will automatically increase because I've set up the equations to be driven off that. So let's look, number of posts, if I double click on that and instead of four I type in six. You can see the length has automatically updated to the correct length. We have got six posts indeed on top and look at the bottom we have got one, two, three, four, five. Everything is updated automatically for us. And you don't just have to do it through this view here. You could, if I turned off those annotations we could we can actually go right into the pattern edit the pattern bring it up to 8 click OK and everything updates automatically for us and we could bring it right down to well not 1 but 2 we can't go down to 1 because you'd actually have to delete the pattern to get that out and then you'll see we don't even need this pattern anymore. So we're a wee bit limited in that way, but we can go as, as long and as short uh, as long as we want. You go to 22 and it would calculate it out perfectly for you. So just a little we little kind of note on the power we have with that smart dimension tool in the sense that we can put formulas in there um once we know the geometry and we understand that as this increases we're always going to have one less or how we work at overall length or whatever it is we got to understand that and then we can start adding that real flexibility into our design so that we can make changes extremely quickly and make it extremely powerful and um, instead of having to work out every time and constantly keep adding in specific dimensions so hopefully you find that helpful and um, it's going to help us towards configurations in another video and um, we're going to look at other ways of how we can uh, kind of drive dimensions as well.